Good morning. Through the week. Good job, Paul. Well, I can see that people like the cafe that we've set up in the back. That's right. We, we are trying to think about everything here, about how can we bring energy, enthusiasm. I'm actually, usually I start off the day and I say good morning and then no one says anything. And I say, I guess everybody had a big night in New York and I get a couple laughs. I'm not going to do that because I want you to save your energy, actually, because as you know from yesterday, uh, we, we wanted to open today by hearing from people in the community. And so I want you to save um, your energy for them and for some other uh, thanks that I'm going to offer. You know, we were in here last night looking at the reset for today. And, um, you know, it got me into a state of a little bit of uh, mindfulness practice of all the folks that we really need to give thanks for for everything we all get to experience over these two days. In order to start, actually, uh, with the folks who, who work here in this hotel and uh, the staff we've got back in the AV uh, zone back there, as well as our partners, uh, Cheryl and Scott from Impulse. I mean, everything you experience uh, over these couple of days is, is really due to the hard work and commitment of people here who are trying to deliver a great experience. And I'd love for you to bring some great day two energy to thanking all of them deeply, please. Second, I was in the mindset of being quite mindful, of course, for um, the Shared Value Initiative team. So many of you work with them closely on a day-to-day -day basis uh, to design all of these sessions, to do all of the prep. Uh, it's tireless work, and it all gets delivered and realized here. But Stacy, Alicia, Katie, Georgie, and Stephanie uh, work their hearts out, again, to deliver a great experience for all of us. And please, please join me in giving them a warm round of applause. And finally, what I want to do now is I want to bring up three people. As I said, we chose from submissions on the board last night and also from some tweets. And we're going to hear from them uh, one by one. And let me uh, first have you join me in welcoming Katie Tolenko from IntraHealth International. Thank you and good morning. I'm Dr. Kate Talento, and I'm Vice President of Health Systems Innovation at IntraHealth International, which is an international global health NGO. And it's so exciting to be here today with a room full of people who understand that doing good, doing the right thing, can be good for businesses' bottom line. There's been a lot of talk about jobs lately, but what if I told you that there were over a million open, vacant health sector jobs in the U.S. right now, and millions more globally? and that people are desperate to fill these jobs, especially people from minority and medical underserved communities, but they can't access the necessary education. And the health sector is so important because actually for most countries, it's going to be the fastest growing sector, and also the sector in which most new jobs are going to be created in the next few decades. And also when you look at the, the health sector, we see it's very ripe for disruption. Um, it's a sector in which the majority of uh, the employees are actually women, so women's empowerment is crucial. We see that if healthcare costs aren't curbed, countries will be bankrupt. Uh, we also know that in the U.S. and many other countries, about a third of healthcare money is lost in unnecessary care, waste, fraud, and corruption. When we look at entrepreneurship programs, we see that very few of the entrepreneurs are specializing in healthcare. So we really need to, to disrupt this sector. So whether your shared goals, uh, shared value goals are in youth employment, impact employment, women's empowerment, in employee health and productivity, or in changing norms and social values, I would love to continue the discussion of how we can put health workers at the center of shared value. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Uh, next, uh, join me in welcoming Aaron Byrne from Novo Nordisk. Good morning, everyone. My name is Erin Byrne, and I do public affairs strategy at Novo Nordisk. Some of you may be aware of Novo Nordisk. We are a pharmaceutical company, mainly focused on diabetes, but also breaking into the obesity market recently. Um, I'm here with a handful of my colleagues, and one of the jobs that I have, along with um, my partner in crime, Diana, who leads up our corporate giving and social impact team, 
is to really raise awareness about our triple bottom line throughout our company. It's our shared value principle and framework that we have. Um, you know, we talked a lot, and you've heard a lot over the past couple of days about how do you be successful in this area, and what are some key nuggets to, to companies who are getting it right. One was hearing that you need to have it enterprise-wide, and that you need to have it woven in your culture. And I'm proud to stand here and tell you that Novo Nordisk is excelling in both of those areas. That to say, it's not static. You may have read some of our case studies on China, and you may have heard um, my colleague Marnie yesterday talking about how shared value is really leading the approach that we're taking to dealing with obesity in the US. Um, but we've had a lot of changes, and through changes come more challenges. So my narrative is still trying to ensure that those two things stay at the top, that it stays within our culture, that it's embedded not just in the areas for me, Diana, and, and our other colleagues who are here, but that it's led by the commercial team and that they realize the potential as well. We've had some change in our management, so it's, we're now dealing with getting our new CEO back on board and our, our new executive team members aware of the importance of how triple bottom line is not just a CSR initiative, but it's actually part of our business philosophy and really does need to be led through the business. So that's what I put on yesterday for our narrative and um, inspired by being here with all of you and, and all the discussions, whether they be you know outside over cocktails or um, in the session. So thank you very much. And finally, Mr. Gordon Watson from AIA in Hong Kong. Gordon. Good morning, everyone. My name is Gordon Watson from the AIA Group, and I've been charged with setting up the Shared Value Project in Hong Kong. Um, and I really look forward to bringing companies like Vessel to Hong Kong. I felt so guilty this morning drinking my Starbucks. Um, I, I'll try not to do that again. And stories like Deshaun, you know, and bringing these stories to Hong Kong. So we're setting up in uh, Hong Kong. We are following the great work that Peter and Helen have done in Australia. Um, so we're a fast follower and we really appreciate all the help you're giving. But of course, uh, being Scottish, we need money um, to fund it. <laughs> So I'm very happy we have, uh, we have some great uh, initial uh, founders and sponsors. We have uh, Barclays Bank. Um, Anthony Davis came all the way from Hong Kong. He's the CEO of Barclays in Hong Kong. So he came and he is the CEO and it's at that level we want to engage. We have the Capital Group. We have uh, Medex. We have Fullerton. We have Amazon Web Services. They've all signed up. And of course we have the AIA Group. And we've been working very closely with Discovery and um, to bring wellness um, to Hong Kong, which really, truly is shared value. We've also started to make progress in the mental health area, and we're trying to get um, shared value on the syllabus at Hong Kong University for the MBA program, and we're talking to the Financial Times to actually have shared value included in the syllabus for the diploma that they do. We're also very fortunate, the, the new CEO, or Prime Minister, as we say in the UK, for um, Hong Kong herself, Carrie Lam, really embraces shared values. So we think we'll get great uh, cooperation from the government. So I'd like finally just to ask all of you if, if you can contact me through the app or LinkedIn. And if you've any interest in joining Shared Value Hong Kong, because I'm sure you have uh, uh, companies in Asia and you may uh, want to enter the market, anything we can do to help would be more than welcome. Thank you very much. Great, thank you, Kate, thank you, Aaron, and thank you, Gordon. Uh, the three stories help uh, craft a bit of a narrative of what we're trying to do through the Shared Value Initiative. Obviously, you hear from Kate and deep work on a specific issue, in her case, healthcare access delivery and improvement of health and patient outcomes. Uh, for us, very important to take an issue-focused lens to the work that the initiative is doing. Aaron, talking about the journey of companies along shared value, how do we continue to do work to accelerate those journeys? And as she said, not a, not a static journey, not a one-time infusion of new thinking, but how do we continue to support and advance shared value for companies? And then finally, from Gordon, how do we then build this network in a way that amplifies and accelerates the efforts 
of organizations like Gordon's and Peter and Helen in, uh, in Australia and work through them to advance their efforts and create greater reach. All three of these things are critical to shared value initiative and the success of our overall community. Now I wanted to also, in opening today, fill in a very uh, critical dimension for you of how we go about our work in the Shared Value Initiative. And that's the focus that we're placing on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And this has been a priority for FSG, our parent organization, and for the Shared Value Initiative. How do we infuse diversity, equity, and inclusion in the work that we're doing, in how we're thinking about the summit, and as a critical business issue for all of you, our partners. And what I would say are a couple of things. Number one, we approach this topic with great humility. And I would say for me personally, I approach this knowing that there are many things I don't know myself about how to advance the diversity, equity, and inclusion agenda. Uh, and, and I approach it in that way and knowing that I have my own blind spots. But at the same time, what do we do about that? First of all, and probably uh, one of the most important thing is, we partner with people who have deeper knowledge and experience than we do. Working, of course, from PolicyLink. Many of you saw Angela Glover Blackwell here last year, and we're so thankful to have her, as well as a number of members of her team, back to join us in a conversation this morning with Mark, PayPal, and Prudential. But the second thing I would say that's so critical for us is even as we approach this topic with humility and understanding our own individual and institutional shortcomings, I don't think that can ever be an excuse for not being accountable for greater progress and the urgency at which we continue to push this conversation. If you heard Michael Porter yesterday say that he felt that inequality was the, and he referenced it as income inequality, was one of the greatest threats uh, confronting all of us, I would suggest to you that racial and gender and all forms of inequality are a bright line through all of that. Uh, and importantly, not just as a US issue, but in this global community as an issue confronting all of us. So we approach it with humility, but with purpose and with intention to hold ourselves accountable and jointly have you hold us accountable uh, to greater progress and advancement.